All right, everybody, this is our last like lesson on learning about square roots and different things you can do with them. Um, but we are going to do the Pythagorean theorem with square roots, but this is the last kind of just um, problems without application to them. So we're going to go through our list, remember, and pause it and make your own if you need to. 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, 5 squared is 25, 6 squared is 36. Pause the video if you need to. 7 squared is 49. 8 squared is 64. 9 squared is 81. And 10 squared is 100. The more you write them down, the more you will memorize them. 11 squared is 121. 12 squared is 144. Please feel free to pause the video. 13 squared is 169. 14 squared is 196. 15 squared is 225. 16 squared is 256. Again, please feel free to pause the video. 17 squared is 289. 18 squared is 324. 19 squared is 361. We're beginning to get to the end of my knowledge. Uh, 20 squared is 400. I'm going to get my calculator soon. 21 squared is, I think it's 441, but at this point it's a good idea for me to grab my calculator just to verify. There we go. All right, 22 squared is 484. Just double checking. 23 squared, you can see, just double checking. 529, 24 squared is 576. Uh, 25 squared is 625. 26 squared, let's see here, 676. 27 squared, I think 729. Okay. 28 squared, 784. 20, by the way, um, I'm at home, so if you hear a random child screaming, um, just my kids, no worries. And 30 squared is 900. Okay, we're getting them ready to bed for bed, so hopefully they're nice and quiet up there. My husband's helping me out. All right. So we are still in the same eligible keystone uh, content and the same PA state core, core standards. <clears throat> so we're going to talk about, again, what do we do if it's a perfect square? So like 16 was on the list, right? I can keep that right there. Well, the square root of 16 is a perfect 4 with nothing left over. 63 is not a perfect square, so we have to go through our list and we have to find out what one of these numbers goes into 63. The first one that works is 9 times, and then you get a 7. So it's like 63 divided by 9 is 7. The square root of 9 is a 3, and the square root of 7 is trapped. Then we learned how to, yesterday we learned how to multiply them, so we have to do 28 times 21. So we get 588. Um, and then we had to go through our list and try to figure out which one of these numbers goes into 588 first. My daughter's here. Say hi, honey. Hi! All right. So let me see. I'm going to guess that it's... I really don't know. Um, I'm just going to have to start at, uh, I'll start at 256. I don't think that's what it is, but. All right, now let's go ahead um, and do, goodness, you know what? I better do um, 289, just in case. Could you imagine if that was it and I missed it? All right, so now what am I doing? I'm doing um, 588 divided by, oh, I'll try 196. Oh, that was it. Okay, good, 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 good. I got it. So it's 196 and 3. So the square root of 196, I guess I could have left, looked at my list, is 14 with the square root of 3. And right, now then we did a division one yesterday. So we'll divide first and put the answer in a square root. So what is that? It's going to be 120. And then I have this one memorized on my list. Um, it's just one of those weird things I have memorized. You know how we all have weird things memorized? Um, you would start at 64, so you would do divide by 64. That would not work. Uh, next, you divide by 49. Next, you would divide by 36. Um, next, you would divide by 25. Next, you would divide by 16. Next, you would divide by 9. And this is it. It's 120 divided by 4. I just have some things I have memorized. <laughs> And that's one of them. So I got a 4 that worked with a 30. So the answer would be a 2 with a square root of 30. 
Okay, so we talked about, well, we reviewed how to do a perfect square, how to do things that have, like, squares inside of them, how to multiply and then reduce, and then how to divide and reduce. That's my daughter. So this is new today. Um, I'm not quite sure how it's going to go, but I really, really just, you know, I thought these notes through um, a lot. So hoping that this helps you learn how to work with the squares again. Sorry about my kids. Um, all right, so we have an expression that's shown below. Guys, try to be quiet, please. Um, for what values of x could the expression be rewritten in the form a squared to b, where a and b are whole numbers and a is bigger than 1? In other words, um, I need to know out of these multiple choice answers, which one of these answers would I do 123 times so that I end up getting something along the lines of like 5 squared is 6. So I have whole numbers, not necessarily those whole numbers, but that I get whole numbers and that it reduces. So my best way to do this with you is to break 123 down into its prime factorization. So like I know 123 divides by 3. It's 3 and 41. These are prime numbers that can't be broken down anymore. So then what we're going to do is we're going to go through our multiple choice options and we're going to reason through which multiple choice option has a factor that is either 3 or 41. So in other words, like what are factors of 11? Well, just 11 and 1. What are factors of 17? Just 7. So look, I'm finding factors. What are factors of 17? Just 17 and 1. What are factors of 23? Well, just 23 and 1, because those are prime. What are factors of 42? Oh dear, there's a lot of them, right? So let's think. Um, two. Well, 1, right? 1, 2, I think even 3, right? Doesn't it divide by 3? Mm -hmm. 3. Not 4, 5. 6, right? 42 divides by 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And as we go through the list, um, let's see, what do we get? Oh, 14, right? And 2 times, let's see, 21. And then, of course, 42. Holy cow. So can you see, let's go back to the original, that the prime factorization of 123 had a 3 inside of it, and so does 42, that means that 42 would allow us to reduce the square root. So the question will be, how would it allow us to reduce our square root? Well, I would do 123 times 42. So in other words, I'm replacing x with 42. So let's go ahead and work that through. So what's 123 times 42? Wow, that's a really big number, right? 5166. So if you were to go through this giant list over here, you would end up getting, I'm pretty certain, if you would have to work your way all the way down this list until you got to 9. And 9 would be the first number that went into it. So it would be like the square root of 9 times 574. I think that's, I honestly think that's it because I don't think that divides by anything. No, I don't think that's a, a nice thing at all. <clears throat> um, so, <clears throat> let's see, 3 times... Yeah, that's it. So this would end up being 3 with the square root of 574. So you might say, again, let's just review. How did Mrs. Langelli know that D was the answer? Because when I did my prime factorization of 123, that broke down to a 3 and a 41. <coughs> Option D was the only one that had a factor that matched one of these factors over here. That factor just so happened to be a 3. Let's try that again. Okay, now 91 might appear to be prime to you, um, and maybe you might think that, but it's actually not. Like, I know 91 doesn't divide by 2. I personally know 91 does not divide by 3. I know 91 does not divide by 4. I know 91 does not divide by 5. I know 91 does not divide by 6. However, I do know that 91 divides by 7. It would be 7 and 13. So I need to figure out which of the multiple choice options... Which of these multiple choice options would kind of get along or shares a factor of 7 and 13? So let's talk about our factors of 10. So what are the factors of 10? Well, I know that 1, 2, 5, and 10 go into 10. None of those match my pink circles up there of 7 and 13. What goes into 14? Well, <coughs> My factors of 14 are 1, 2, 7, and 10. Excellent. 
See how I got a match of seven? That means option B is my option. So you break them down into their, their factors and you find a factor that matches. Now, just for emphasis sake, six breaks down to one, two, three, and six. None of those match. And 30 breaks down to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 15, and 30. Oh, and three and 10. Sorry, I missed three and 10. But the important thing is that you realize that the only option is option B because only option B shares a common factor of seven. So seven would be what we use. Now, if we wanted to like show that that option B is my answer, I would do 91 times 14 because that's what option B is. And I would get 1274. And then I would have to wake, work my way down that list. Remember this list over here, the way that I taught you until eventually we get to 49. <coughs> so let's see, what is that divided by 49? That's a 26. So my final answer would be a seven with a square root of 26. So option B is the answer because only option B shares a common factor with 91. So only option B would allow us to be able to reduce the way that I've been teaching you. So if I ever asked you like, hey, what could X be? Make sure you try to find one that has a common factor. All right, now let's take a look at the next problem. What is the smallest whole number x so that 20, so the square root of 20 times that x is a whole number? So what that means is they want no leftovers. They want me to be able to get a perfect square, okay? So that when you do the square root of it, you get a perfect square. So here's your steps for that, okay? You want 20x to become a perfect square. That's your only way that you're gonna get a whole number when you take the square root. So start at the first perfect square that is bigger than 20. So in other words, 25. Oh my gosh. Make your way up to the bigger numbers until you get one that 20 is a factor of. So here's what you do. You say, can I do 25 divided by 20? No, you get a decimal. Can I do 36 divided by 20? No, you get a decimal. Can I do 49 divided by 20? No, you get a decimal. Can I do 64 divided by 20? No, you get a decimal. And if you work your way through, you'll see that that is truly the case. Okay, um, the one that the first one that works, so 81 would be next, and again, you would get a decimal with 81, and then finally 100 happens. So 100 divides by 20, right? <coughs> and I get an answer of 5. Okay, so what that means is I need x to be 5 so that it works. Now, here's how you prove it. So the original problem was 20 times x. If I'm saying x has to be 5, remember I picked 5 because that's the first time that my division problem worked, that would give me the square root of 100, and the square root of 100 is a perfect 10. It's the first time I could get a whole number. So those process steps are, if you have 20 times x, you go to the, on your list, you go to the number that's just bigger than 20, which is 25, and you divide by 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20 until you get one that's a perfect factor. So you have like 100 divided by 20 makes 5. That tells you what you need x to be. And you prove it by putting 5 in for x, getting a perfect square, and reducing it to a whole number. Let's try that process again. Okay, what is the smallest whole number x so that the square root of 28x, so the whole thing becomes a whole number? So in other words, I need that to become a perfect square because only the square root of a perfect square is a whole number. So the blanks are, I need 28x to become a perfect square. Okay, so I started the first perfect square that's bigger than 28. So in this case, I start at 36. Okay, I just copy and pasted this in paint for you. So I do 36 divided by 28 and that will be a decimal. 
And then I do 49 divided by 28. Again, that will be a decimal. Then I do 64 divided by 28. And again, that's a decimal. And you make your way up your list. So I'll do 81 divided by 28, 100 divided by 28, um, 121 divided by 28, 144 divided by 28, um, 169 divided by 28. None of these are working. Uh, 190, I think it's 196, question mark, divided by 28. There it is. So you make your way up the list. Boop, 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 boop. Remember, the first one I found was 196. 196 divided by 28 is a 7. So this is the first time that 28 is a factor of a perfect square. I need x to be 7, and here's my proof. 28x means 28 times 7. 28 times 7 is 196. 196 is a perfect square, and the square root of it is 14 which is a perfect whole number. So the smallest number that x can be is a seven. So that I get a perfect square and the perfect square root is 14. One more like that and then I'll finish these notes on a separate video. What is the smallest no whole number <clears throat> so that the square root of 18x is a whole number? Remember my goal is to get 18x to be a perfect square. So I need 18x to become a perfect square square. All right, so I'm going to go to my first number that's bigger than 18. 25, eight, excuse me, 28, not 28, 25 divided by 18 is a decimal. 36 divided by 18, boom, right away I get a 2. So 28, remember, 25 was a decimal. So I need x to be 2. To prove it that I am correct, which is going to be something you need to do, I will do the square root of 18x equals the square root of 18 times 2, which is the square root of 36, which ends up being a perfect square root of 6 at the end. So my, app, my value of x will need to be 2 so that this process works out. The rest of these notes will be done in a separate video.